All right, I'm here with Miss Luna, and this is Miss Luna's Roadmap to Success. Now, she is a great little girl. She took puppy classes at our puppy classes, so obviously she was already off to a good start. And she's got some really good guardians who are really looking out for her, which is another huge asset that not every dog has. We started off the session by going over the importance of marker words. Her marker word is yes. Um, one of the things that uh, the kids might want to do is just go around the house, just say yes, give her a treat. <laughs> Go to the next room, yes, give her the treat. Um, so dogs don't generalize well. So anytime you do practice, you wanna practice a lot of variety. The video I did above is great, but don't practice only on your front porch. Practice on your driveway, practice over by the shrubs, different parts of your yard. If you only practice on it, she'll only be able to do it on the porch. Um, all right, so we also went over, um, before we got to that, um, let me see, um, marker words. Well, we went over cues and marker words, and if you forget how to do those, let me know, and I have a video on that. Just make sure you guys are specifically using yes and saying yes the same way. Some of the guardians were saying yes, some were saying yes, so it's okay. We just want to be consistent however we say it. So we say yes the instant the dog does the thing that we want. The instant her butt hits the ground, we'd say yes, and then we follow it up by giving her a treat. Don't give her the treat and say yes at the same time. Now, if uh, the if uh, the cue, uh, well, excuse me, the marker word, um, so the instant her butt hits the ground, I say yes, and I give her the treat because that's the instant that I want her to understand that the, sitting her, your butt down is what I wanted. I'm paying you for that task. But what if the task involves time? Like the other video we did is how to stay out of the uh, dining, uh, how to stay in the kitchen when we're eating at the dining room table. So at that point, we would take two steps backwards, and we would say, we would say the marker word after we came back to her. So I took a step back, paused, came back to her, then I said yes, because I'm saying yes to Mark, I like you staying here on the dog bed for the while I stepped away, while I came back, and I said yes at the conclusion of that. So if your activity has a duration, you're gonna say the marker word at the end of the duration, and it's immediately followed by a treat. Try not to say yes while I'm holding the treat out or giving her the treat, so say yes, then I reach for my pet treat and then give it to her. Uh, we also went over uh, hand targeting. I have a video on that, and that's a really important one because especially for your guests, um, once you guys have practiced this as a family enough, then you can have your guests throw your hand down, say touch, touch or target. Yours is touch, right? Touch. Touch, and then if she doesn't go over her guest, she's saying, I don't feel comfortable going over the guest. That's the prelude to barking at the guest. So that's an indication we need to work on it. Now, when you have guests come over, I would tell your guests to ignore her. And again, what do we? Well, the other thing we talked about is uh, creating a scenario where we're able to practice. If, what we normally try to do is teach our dog how to do things while we're doing the major event. It's like learning to drive on the freeway is the worst place to learn to drive. So we learn to drive in a parking lot. When our skill set is good there, then we go to the next level. Yes, I saw that. Uh, somebody walked by and she didn't bark. She's already making progress. Um, and then we go to a, a, a street that has, yes, I know. Then we have a street with uh, no cars and I practice on a street. Or I might park in the parking lot with cones and then I go to a street with no cars and then with parked cars and then with slow moving cars and then the faster moving cars. I work my way up there slowly and I go at the pace of my subject or my student. Just because I want to go faster doesn't mean that she can do that speed. If we go get greedy, then she's going to react, we're going to get frustrated, and we're not going to have very good progress. So slow and steady is much better. Um, all right, so basically um, we went over hand targeting, uh, and so that's something that we can use. So if a guest comes over, maybe the, the humans in the family here does a little hand targeting, and the guest sits quietly off to the side, and then after a while, one of the guest throws their hand up, and the dog's like, I just did it 23 times, uh, and I feel comfortable with you. I run over, I touch my nose, and I get a treat. Now I'm listening to the, to the guest and being rewarded for listening to the guest. And if I don't want to, the guest doesn't say it three times. I'm not punished for it. My family now understands that's my way of saying I don't feel comfortable enough for that guest. So that guest, I might just give a whole bunch of treats or kibble. If she likes her kibble. Um, and the, the guest can throw a treat, wait for her to look. As soon as she looks at him, say yes and throw a treat somewhere else. She goes and gets it. She doesn't have to come back to me as a guest. All she has to do is look at me. And then, and then the guest throws another treat. So now it becomes a game. It's something fun that she enjoys doing. It's an activity that is structured so that she can stay as far away as she feels comfortable. And gradually she'll come closer and closer. Now front facing is confrontational to dogs. Sideways is approachable, behind us is defenseless. So if your guest, if she's nervous with a guest, it'd be best if your guest was sitting and try to offer the treats where they're off to the side instead of in front. We typically come and stand front facing and we lean over a dog, which is a very intimidating position for a lot of dogs, especially little dogs like her. So um, when your guest comes over, tell them to ignore her. And again, go through your contacts list on your phone, find five or 10 friends that live in the area that can come by and help you with her. One person coming by is a lot easier than a whole family coming by. 
Um, uh, and also, uh, you can remember, set her up for success by getting her some exercise ahead of time. Just make sure she has at least that 10 minutes to rest. But I think she also thinks that her job, the way she contributes to this family, is by being the guard dog. And also, she gets a lot of uh, attention when she growls or barks. To dogs, that's validating, unless you're being abusive, which is don't want to do. And so every time I bark at people, my humans yell at me and the person goes away. I get validated twice. My bark made them go away and I get attention. So what we want to do is try to prevent her from seeing it. So maybe I, I recommended kind of blocking the visuals and I don't think that's going to go over so well. So maybe at the certain times of the day when people are more likely to be out there than she's going to bark, we're going to prevent her from being in the, in the room that gives her access to look out those windows. It's called management or maintenance. I'm preventing the problem from getting worse. It's not fixing the problem, but the more she does it, the more she practices and she gets better at the problem. So that's an important part of the process. Um, I know, is my lap not big enough? I'm trying to lose weight. Sorry, sweetheart. Um, all right, so um, we also went over um, uh, basically teaching the dog rules or, or uh, manners. Um, and we do, and I like to do it the same way that we teach children, parents do at least. They do it typically with a do-over. The child comes up and says, I want chocolate cake right now, darn it. And mom says, would you like to ask that again? Mommy, could I please have chocolate cake? If you eat all your dinner, maybe you can have some after dinner if you're a good boy. So the mom usually tries to give the child a do or dad, a do over and telling them or, or directing them at first. That's not how you say, how you say ask for a thing. Would you like to ask again? Can I please have chocolate cake? So we're giving them a do over. And if they do what we want in the do over, then we reward them if possible. So when she comes up and nudges or paws her guardians or barks at them or jumps up on them, she's saying, give me your attention. But she's saying kind of like, give me your attention, Nart. So we, now we say, would you like to ask for that again? By asking her to sit or asking her to lay down. We're only going to ask her one time. She has two seconds to do it. If she doesn't do it, there's no punishment. There's no correction. I just go back to reading my emails, uh, watching TV, painting something, whatever I was doing before. I'm not going to correct the dog, but now the dog is missing out on the attention that it wanted because it didn't do what I asked it to do. After a while, the dog will start sitting in front of you. If, I usually ask for a sit or a down, the two things that I ask for. And again, I only ask once. If she doesn't do it, playing hard to get works great for dog training. So if she doesn't do it, then I'm on to my next thing and she's missing out. Next time, she's more motivated to want to listen to me because she didn't get what she wanted. After a while, she'll start sitting in front of you to prepay for the attention when she does. Make sure you say your marker word and pet her. Remember, the best place to pet is under the chin, on the chest, or on the two shoulders. We want to try to avoid reaching over the head. If you reach for your dog, your dog turns its head, lowers its head, backs away, doesn't look at you, don't, won't come to you, or rolls over and shows you its belly, it's saying, I don't want to do whatever you're doing. We think, oh, you're being silly and show me your belly. No, I'm being as submissive as I possibly can because I don't want to do, I'm trying to placate you. Or if the dog turns its head, we kind of grab the dog anyways. One of the things we went over towards the end of the session is teaching her to put her harness on. And she didn't want to do it, and... A lot of us just think, well, I'm just going to grab the dog and just slide over. It's not a big deal. You're making, it is a big deal to her. And the more you do that, the more, anytime we force a dog to do something, we're going to make it a worse and worse situation. And I have clients that do this for years and eventually one day get bit and they're like, came out of nowhere. No, it's been going there for three years. You just haven't been listening. So if that's the case, what I would do is I would just, uh, for the harness, we pull out the harness and then we go for a walk. So she gets really excited. It's hard for her to control herself. Remember, energy matters. So I wouldn't let her play or do anything above 50% of her energy range. So what I did is I held up the harness, and this is not to scale. And I, whoop, I'm going to try to keep you on my lap, sweetheart. Yes. She's like, that's not super comfy. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I'm not going to force. If you want to get up, I will let you. But it, it's a better shot if you're here. She's like, I like your dog face mask. So what I would do is hold up the harness like this, so the opening, and I'd stick my hand all the way through it. And then approach so she just comes and she doesn't have to put her hand through it and she gets the treat gradually my hand comes further and further back and eventually she's sticking her nose through and then getting the treat and eventually she's sticking her whole head through the harness and when you get to that stage then i would start saying yes after she puts her head through and then attach the rest of it and give her the treat and then i would probably practice this in different rooms of your house and eventually you could say <laughs> uniform hold it up she puts her hand head through it you attach it and then you give her a treat and you don't go for a walk you can eventually, but that creates that classically conditioned excitement of the walk. Because every time the harness comes on, we go for a walk. That's what classical conditioning means. Something is going to ha something happens is an indicator of something's going to happen again. So we just help her practice. I'll let you down. We help her practice without going for a walk, so she can actually focus on doing what she wants to do. And now, just putting the harness on means I get a treat. Um, let me see. Um, so petting with a purpose is if she's asking or demanding attention from you, or you would like to pet her. For three months, I'd like you guys to refrain from doing that and instead ask her to sit 
or to lay down or hand target. And if she, if she doesn't, like I said, there's no attention, there's no correction, there's nada. After a while, she'll start sitting to prepay for that attention, and then you mark and, and reward that. I like to use the words manners or polite, because that's what we're trying to do is teach her manners. So if I'm sitting here petting her and she's standing and the guardian says, manners, to me, what the guardian is saying, David, I think you forgot to ask her to do something to earn that affection. That's called a positive interrupter. So she was just about to go for a uh, Christ, uh, Halloween tchotchke that's hanging up that the guardian doesn't like her going at. But every time she goes up there, she gets attention. Remember, good attention, bad attention, the same thing. So I made the positive interrupter sound. When she looked at me, I went to hand target. She came over to touch her nose with my hand, and I rewarded her. And then I would give her a bully stick or a lick mat or take her for a walk or do the doggy stair mat or some of the exercise stuff we'll talk about here in a minute. So getting back to petting with a purpose, if you would like to pet your dog or your dog is asking you to pet, you're going to ask her to do something to earn that pet first. She has two seconds to do it. When she does it, you say your mark word and pet her. If not, we don't pet her. We say polite or manners as a way of indicating to the other humans in the house, I think you forgot to do the right thing. And even if I did it right, I would stop, tell her to sit. And then if she does sit, yes, and pet her on the chin and say, actually, I asked her to sit. And when you open the door, she got excited and I continue. But thank you. I do forget to pet without a purpose. The other side of that is called passive training, or as technically, uh, most trainers call it capturing, I call it celebrating. Celebrating is rewarding the dog when it does the things that you want voluntarily. Most of us train our dogs to misbehave because that's the fastest, most consistent way to get our attention. Well, if you start saying your marker word every time your dog sits, looks at you in the face with eye contact, lays down, drinks their water, goes to the different dog bed places, um, uh, grabs a toy, whatever it is, and you say yes, and then pet her or give her attention, she's gonna do those things to get your attention as opposed to the jumping up and the nudging and the barking and all the rest of the stuff that you don't want her to do. These are very easy things to do. And my clients that get the best results are the ones that adopt both of these techniques. And a lot of my clients, including me possibly today, are like, why are we doing this when this, I want my dog not to bark. But if you don't tell your dog what you want it to do, it doesn't know and it's gonna do other things and it gets frustrated and that's gonna like lead to more behaviors you don't want. So use uh, celebrate or whatever the word is that you wanna use and that means you should just stop what you're doing, say your mark word, pet the dog. Uh, and eventually I wanna be mindful of it. So the dog's coming towards me from over there. I know she's coming towards me. So I might say come when she's halfway here. When she gets here, I say yes and then I pet her. So remember the cue, we wanna sneak in when we're 90% certain the dog's gonna do it. If I know the dog's making a beeline, I say come, she's already coming anyways. But I'm still rewarding that behavior and that makes her more likely to come the next time I ask her to come. Um, we also talked about exercise. Sniffing burns more energy and walks and it's also relaxing and it uh, acquires data which builds their confidence. When I first came in, she gave me some indications that she was a little insecure, she was shying away from me. So if you have guests that come over and they go to pet her and she kind of shies away, I would just have them pull their arm back. Nothing punishment, there's nothing wrong with that, but she's just saying, I'm not fully into this or I'm not fully comfortable. And we stop because it's not okay for her, then it's not okay for us. And after doing that about four or five times, then I was able to reach over and she didn't shy away and list away from me. And so I respected her by listening to, and I earned her trust through my actions, not what I told her to do. Remember, petting a dog is not always the best way to earn their, uh, their trust if they're saying, I don't want you to pet me. So look for those signs of disengagement, turning away, lowering the head, backing away, not looking at you. She's really good at turning her head away. She was doing that a couple times throughout the session. When she does that, listen to that. Um, all right, so uh, sniff walks is a great way to burn energy. Walk for time, not a circuit. Don't work on a loop. Just go for how much time you have. Half of the time I'm going walking away from the house, then my timer goes off, I cross the street, and I come back for the other, I might only make it half a house. I don't care, because I'm letting her sniff, because that's gonna burn more energy. We can also play fetch. I would count the number of fetches for different activities. So fetch a certain number of times before a guest comes over, or before you do the uh, engage, disengage exercise. Does she perform better or worse? The next day, maybe the first time you fetch her 15 times, and give it, remember after exercise, 10 minutes of rest. And then maybe next time I try her 20 times. Was it was the result better or worse? Oh, it was better, okay. Well, maybe we should do, let's try 25. And eventually you'll find that Goldilocks amount of exercise before that sets her up for success when guests come over. The kid has a friend over. Um, we're practicing engage, disengage, or whatever else it is. Uh, let me see, playing tug of war is a nice way to burn energy as well. Um, that same one, and all the activities that you do, anytime her energy level gets above 50% on a range of 10, she gets a treat out. Hand target her, have her come aside, give her a bunch of treats or rubber belly or whatever she likes, wait for her energy to calm down. One of the children in the house plays with her a little bit rough and that can create some problems as well. So I would let them play, but have a red light, green light sort of game. So as soon as you get to 50%, red light, and the child has to stop and freeze. 
Dog's gonna still jump up? Why are you? Boy, you're lame. Now my energy as a dog is coming down and down. When the dog gets to level two, then we can go back to playing again. And so if we're consistent that 50% energy level, the dog will eventually start maintaining that on their own through barking and other things as well. What is that? It's another way to practice a little bit of self-restraint and self-control without doing it in the actual moment. Uh, let me see. Um, uh, another, well, something else you could do is potentially get, hey, they make doggy backpacks. They have little uh, uh, bags here. You can put bottles of water. If the dog's carrying something, it makes the walk a little bit more efficient. Check with your vet to make sure that they're okay with that mobility issues and, and so on. You can also, um, and also dogs should not exercise when they have, unless it's been 90 minutes after they've eaten. Uh, their stomach's not attached to anything. It actually can turn over and flip and explode. So about 90 minutes after eating before they do anything where it's a lot of lateral movement. So another thing you do is stand at the top of the stairs, and this is something the kids could do. Show her you have a treat, throw it down the bottom of the stairs. When she runs down, licks it up, say yes, and then show her you have another treat, and call her and say, come. She runs up the stairs. So now you can create a doggy stairmaster. Now this is the last one that I'd want you to use. I'd want you to use other things as well. Uh, other things first, because this is a repetitive activity, but in a pinch, it works great. Ice storm, you don't want to go outside. That's a great way to burn energy, but you can also play fetch up and down the stairs, things like that. There's also mental stimulation. Um, feeding out of a snuffle mat twice a day is like adding in an extra walk that the guardians and the guardians here are both very, very busy. So if we can incorporate feeding twice a day, that's a nice way to get some exercise in where it really doesn't cost us any more time or effort than what we're already doing. And also the dog's working for its food, so it boosts its confidence and problem solving skills and all the rest of that stuff. Uh, also go to Amazon or Chewy, look for some treat dispensing toys and puzzles. Um, and when you have guests come over, if you fill up that ball and let it roll around, she's not interested in dealing with the guest. And again, your guest should ignore her until she's coming to them. And when they reach for her, at any point she changes her mind, the guest listens to her. That's why it's important to go through your phone and find people who are gonna listen to you. You can have them watch this video or just give them some of these tips and just say, just ignore her. When she comes to you, you can hold a treat out to your side. If she barks at you, just throw a treat behind her. And eventually, I like it when guests come over because it rains treats, man, and the guests listen to me. They're not trying to corner me or pet me or do things that I don't want them to do. Um, let me see, what else can we do? Uh, we can also go over training as a great way to burn energy. So we went over hand targeting. We, we went over leave it exercise. Uh, that'll help with her getting not getting in the trash. So you don't want to get in the trash. Let's incorporate two things at once. Let's go upstairs. Let's put a piece of roast beef in the trash. And every time she looks away from the trash, we say yes and hold a treat. And she has to walk away from the trash can. Then we uh, eventually say yes for walking away from the trash can. And then when we're done, we take the roast beef out of the trash so there's no temptation there. So we create a scenario where we allow her to practice when I have the time, I'm not trying to do 12 things at once and doing a half-hearted job of this, I'm giving it my full effort. And then systematically work on it and eventually get to the point where she's like, I just stay away from trash cans because that's what I've been conditioned to do and that's what I'm rewarded for doing. Most of the time a reward is going in the trash can because I get great stuff, I get to shred it or eat it or whatever, and then my humans get mad, they chase me around. Boy, it's, it's a bonanza of fun. So make sure the trash can is empty. So she gets in there, there's no reward or validation while you're working on this. So work on this for a month or two and just establish, get to the point where you don't have to deal with this behavior anymore. Um, let me see, what else did we go over? Uh, or other forms of exercise. Cooking in the corner, I have a video for that one. That's the one where you throw the treat, you say yes when she licks it up, and then say come, and she runs back to you, say yes and give her the treat. So we're incorporating practice at a recall as well as introduction of scent games. I'd like you to go to Google and Google scent games. Now, don't be put off if it talks about bringing a cadaver into your house. You can do it without bringing dead things into your house. But the idea is eventually kids can play hide and seek. They can sit and hide in a cupboard somewhere and the dog's got to go find her. Or, you know, you could hide the treats in an area and say, find. And then she goes and sniffs the ground, drains a lot of energy. And she can do this inside without you having to get a lot of exercise for her as well. So the idea is to come up with a rhythm. And the family, the guardians here are both very, very busy. So I'd like to come up with a rhythm. Maybe we take her out in the morning and we play fetch for you know, two minutes. And then we bring her inside, she's tired, she needs to recover. While she's recovering, I shower. When she gets done showering, I feed her out of a snuffle mat. And she gets done eating, she's like, I need a nap. She lays down, takes a nap for a little while. She gets up, maybe two hours later, we do a little cookie in the corner. Two hours after that, we get, take her out for a game, quick game of fetch, two minutes in the backyard. Two hours after that, maybe we feed her a snack out of a treat dispensing toy. Uh, two hours after that, she goes for a short walk. For walks, try to walk in places or times where you're not gonna encounter the things that she barks at. Maybe just walking one block back will give you a lot better temporarily while we're working on the exercise, the engage, disengage game, and eventually get to the point where you can walk her there, but we're not, if we try to do them both at the same time, we'll put her in a situation that causes her to bark and teach her not to, we're gonna back and forth, we're not really making much progress. Uh, let me see, what else? Um, uh, 
so oh, so uh, and maybe an hour or two later than you do uh, the doggy stairmaster or uh, you know uh, give her a, a lick mat or something like that. So the idea is to get her exercise about every two to four hours or exercise before an activity that normally is going to cause her to bark or react to set her up for success. Just make sure after all the physical exercise she has 10 minutes to recover before the next thing happens. We also went over the importance of rules. Um, I normally only do one video here, but uh, gardens are really nice, and, and so I did two. One of them is on how to teach your dog to stay out of the kitchen. Now that's really the fundamentals of what we call the relaxation protocol, which is teaching the dog to stay on a dog bed while various things go on. I would love to send Jacob out, and the guardian was kind of shaking her head no. That's totally fine, but it's a really easy technique, and it's pretty affordable. And it's, the cool thing is it teaches you how to break down steps and you can use it for a whole bunch of different applications. And it helps the dog practice self-control. And that's the reason why we have rules also to keep our stuff safe, but we need the dog to practice not coming in the kitchen because my humans have taught me that staying outside of the kitchen is what gets me the reward. Again, the dog and I have the same motivation to the end point. I want the dog to stay out of the kitchen. The dog wants to stay out of the kitchen. I want to stay out of the kitchen so it's not hassling my when I'm eating or cooking food, the dog stays out of the kitchen because it knows at the end of staying out of the kitchen, I get a reward. So different reasons, but the end goal is still the same. So remember, if your dog has a behavior or a problem, I want you to think about it kind of in a reverse engineer light. Okay, how can I break this down to small individual steps? Now I'm gonna make it the most challenging situation where the dog can perform, and then I practice that first step over and over till the dog's just doing fine, which for in the video above was take one step back and come back. And at first we had to take a half step back always back up to a previous level of success. Eventually, take two steps, four steps, you're sitting down at the table, you're sitting down at a table with uh, roast beef, eventually you're eating a real meal, and she's just sitting contently on the dog bed because we put in the time and effort. If you put in the time and effort now, it might take you a couple weeks to a month or so, but then you get a, have the benefits of that for the rest of your dog's life with occasional you know, maintenance. But if you don't, you just spend, and I think one of the guardians here is doing what a lot of my clients do, which is kind of band-aiding everything to accommodate the dog's problems instead of investing the time for a short period of time and teaching the dog how to behave. And then you get the benefits of people come by and you're like, Luna is such a well-behaved dog. Of course, I had David from Dog Gone Problems come over here and showed us how to do it. And then I put in the time and effort and you will be impressed with your dog just the same way you are with your kids when you help them with something and then they do well at the spelling bee or whatever. Dogs have self-esteem and pride too and they know how you feel about them. If they can tell if you're exasperated, if you're frustrated, or if you're proud of them. Let's make your dog feel proud about doing the things that you want, like staying out of the kitchen. We also went over pre-max. Pre-max means, uh, principle means the less desirable behavior earns me a more desirable behavior. So if you want uh, to go outside, you have to sit. I tell you to sit once. If you sit within two seconds, I open the door. If you don't sit within two seconds, I walk away. And I sit down, I wait a minute, then I come back and say, sit again. You have two seconds this time. If you don't sit within two seconds, I walk away for two minutes. Next time I walk away for four minutes, then eight minutes, I keep double length of time. But as soon as you do what I want, boom, that door flies open. This will condition her to sit at the door to come inside. Sit before I prepare your food. Sit and wait while your food is sitting there on the floor waiting for you until I give you the permission to come over. The more that we help our dog practice restraining themselves, the better equipped they are to not bark at people not jump up on your guests, not growl too much at this or whatever it is, but we have to create these scenarios for them to practice doing them. Otherwise, it's not reasonable for us to expect them to behave the way we haven't taught them. Luna. She's right behind you. Is she? Oh, there she is. Yeah. That was quiet. <laughs> yeah. It came up really good. Now the, the kissing is a positive interrupter. You can also say beep, beep, beep. See how she looked? Saying a word three or four times in a row in kind of a higher pitch is often something that will get animals to engage. So if your dog is doing something you don't want, make the positive interrupter sound. When they look at you, throw your hand down once you practice that enough or whatever it is to get the dog to come to you, comes to you, give it a reward, then practice a little hand targeting. Give it a lick mat, get that Stewart's freeze-dried beef liver, crunch some of that up, put that powder on top of the peanut butter on a lick mat, that'll probably get her something really into uh, chewing it. Is there anything else you want me to go over? You can always call me later, it's no rush, but if there's anything at the top of your mind. Um. I think maybe all this will help when we do have, if we do have another issue with those boys or whatever, you know, like just being not anxious. And yeah, hard. we didn't talk about, well, that's like Okay, let's talk we about that. We didn't talk about the biting I, or like what you do if kids come over and she like snaps mm -hmm. instantly. Like how just should want to we, pet her, but she doesn't how should we, um, so what introduce I would, her to So what I would do is when kids come over, don't have them come over as a group. Kids are unpredictable. They're all over the place. They don't listen very well. At least I didn't when I was a kid. So if you have kids come over, they should come in one at a time. Maybe we sit down and we do a little hand targeting. 
We have the kids, if we're gonna have four kids come over, we have the kids come over once, a, a one day Mary comes over, the next day Sally Usually comes over. One. Yeah. Okay, uh, but if you are going to have a bunch of them, have them come over individually and practice the behavior you want where it's a lot easier one at a time. Now, if the dog is biting, that's either we got it too worked up, too excited, and mm -hmm. probably because playing with it too rough, it's practiced that doing that, or it's saying, I don't like what you're doing and I'm disagreeing and you're not listening to me. So when the guests come over, that's why I like that hand targeting, because if the dog doesn't want to go to the child, it's saying I'm not comfortable. If that's the case, then the dog and the child should not be hanging out together. She's that's our responsibility. And there's some people she just doesn't come Hey, a lot of people don't like me. That's okay. We don't have to like everybody that we meet. And she doesn't have to like everybody. We feel social pressure when it comes to our dogs that our dog has to be super friendly to everybody. Yeah. Well, there's relatives that probably come over and you don't like or friends. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's his friend, not my friend. I'll be nice and civil, but I don't particularly like that person. But, you know, so we don't want her to bite people, but we also don't want her to force her to engage with people she does not want to engage with. So for those people, I would do that looking game that I just talked about a little bit ago. So hand the person, if they're okay with it, if the person wants, doesn't want to do it, then maybe at that point, then she goes for, gets some exercise and then she stays downstairs with a bully stick or some, a cow kneecap, one of my dog's favorite things to chew on. So she gets to do okay, what she wants. And these are uh, bestbullystick.com, uh, but there's a whole, yeah, and make sure they're odor free. They, they, uh, yes, and the tricky oh, trainers and treats that I yes. Yes, uh, so for the bully sticks, if it's odor free, they drain the blood and urine out of the pee pee after it's severed. If they don't, it'll have more aroma. They call it natural scent. So if you don't want to smell all that stuff, you'll yeah. pay a little bit more for the bully sticks, but your nose will thank you later. So when a guest come, when, when kids come over, again, I would also, I mean, really what I would love to have you guys do is have the relaxation protocol and work your way up to where there's a dog bed here and the guest comes in and she practices sitting there and somebody's giving her treats while the guest comes in and the kids are running around, tumbling around. The engage, disengage, you can do the Maybe same thing. Maybe we should thing. have you over for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you can, we can feed you. Right, you can feed me later on. Friend. But <laughs> you, can, you can do that while we have guests. She knows me well. <laughs> uh, but the idea is, again, if, if we have the kids... If we have the kids come over with their friends and we're not prepared for it, we haven't exercised them before and the kids are all yeah. crazy, we're setting the dog up to fail. So instead, why don't you make be mindful about it? You know what? We're going to invite you know whoever the top three friends over for each one. We're going to have them come over three different times and we're going to work on this. The first time, we're going to just, uh, just have them come in. And again, if the, she doesn't want to engage with the guest, as soon as she looks at the guest, the guest says yes and throws one of those Charlie Bears behind her so she walks away and gets it and then the guest just watches her as soon as she looks at him again yes but i throw another treat so dog doesn't have to come to her so now after a while i'm rewarded for looking at this person and i don't have to interact I think that'll be one of the hardest things is with the guests yes and that's why again have go through your phone and find people who will listen a lot of people like but i'm good with dogs why would you dog bite me it has to be I dog owners yeah. Well, I yeah. Love it, yeah but yeah, and, and if you have guests that come over on a regular basis, have yeah. them come over without coming, mom coming over to help with the kids. Mom's, grandma's thinking about helping the kids. She's not thinking about this. Yeah. So we have grandma come over and we practice these behaviors when it's easy and grandma can focus on these things. Now the dog knows when grandma comes over, if I do X, Y, and Z, I get rewarded. So now I'm motivated. Again, motivation is a really key thing that a lot of us don't think of. We think of our dogs almost as a slave. I want you to do everything I want, exactly how I want. Do treats ever work? Did they ever not work? Does the dog get too many sure. treats? Sure. Yeah, she did. It worked today. She hours. got to the point where today yeah. she wasn't but taking I mean, treats. But I mean, another, but it's, I would find it hard to believe it. Not. At any given day, if you haven't introduced them for the day, they're usually, it's usually good Treats training. are going to, yeah, I don't think it's she's going to one day say, I don't it's like treats. It's always going to motivate. Yeah. But the only like, well, motivation you have. Well, affection could also be a motivator, but if I give affection every time the dog wants for everything, then the dog has to, doesn't have to do anything to earn yeah. it. So just like teaching kids. I probably kids, do that too much. Yeah, a lot of us do. We very, It's very common. But I think that's why she likes me the most, because I can't. Well, but people say do. that a lot, but I have people that come to me and they're like, God, you like boss the dog around the whole time. We lavish attention. She just lap it up whatever you do. She does love you. You were the treat man. Well, I'm the treat man, but I'm also, even when I was under the treat, which every time she sat, I was saying yes and petting her. And I watched multiple times. She sat and looked at the guardians and laid down and they didn't acknowledge her. And that's a habit that a lot of us get into. But if chewing the witch over there always gets your attention and sitting gets your attention 15% of the time, and all I care about is attention, I'm going to do yeah. whatever works best. So let's make the celebrating what works best. And going over there, I don't even look at you. I mean, when you go over there, I make make a kissing sound. Or we might I mean, actually I use that kissing sound. She seemed to react to the she positive seemed... interrupters. We yeah. call that. Yeah. Now the other thing I could do is I could actually put that, grab that uh, witch, 
and do a leave it exercise. Put it on the floor and reward her for leaving it alone and gradually make it harder and harder. Eventually, she's like, I just leave the witch alone. Right now, it's kind of, I think, getting the witch is a great way to and get your attention. And it's only around in Halloween. You know, yeah. with all the, like... And you like it. Like you don't want her to destroy time, it. That's another issue. Yeah. Like Christmas decorations. Although, she, like, you know, I mean, you almost have to train them not to eat the tree. The, like, ornaments Well, but the it's, it's flashy. It's new. It has smells. I'm it's sure, different. Right? Those are all very appealing to dogs. So you pull out an ornament, put it down the floor. She looks at it, looks away. Yes, and get a treat. The flashy lights. Put them on the floor before yeah. you put the tree up. Bring a, a branch from a pine tree in, and she leaves and put it up there. So you Simulate. think you can train and retrain dogs? You think Absolutely. that they that's, are? That's all I do. Yeah. Um, I have a little catchphrase I say at the end of the session, uh, and the video, and this is getting too long, so I'm going to end it right now. <laughs> Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.